StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. Fighter Fest Week 2, show number 3, Gas South Arena, Duluth, Georgia, the old Gwinnett Civic Center Arena, Discovery Shark Week. I don't know if you've heard that. Sunday, it begins. Dwayne Johnson making an appearance during AEW programming. He is going to be the master of ceremonies. They've been doing this now for 34 years. In 2020, 21 million people watched over 10 days. It is apparently the best way for them to get new eyeballs onto the channel. It is no surprise when more people return to the channel than at any other time during the year. In April of this year, Discovery Incorporated and Warner Media merged to become Warner Brothers Discovery. And everybody has got to do something sharky. TBS, TNT, True TV, Food Network, HGTV, CNN, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Animal Planet, Science Channel, ID, Oprah Winfrey, Turner Classic Movies, Discovery Plus, and HBO Max Plus will all have Shark Week inspired content or cross promote the event as Dynamite did last night. But we didn't open with a shark, we opened with a king, Brody King and Darby Allen alongside Sting. King was shown with a singles record of 11 and 2. Darby Allens was 62, 23 and 1. And I thought, aren't records supposed to be reset every year? Or is that just the rankings? None of that matters. Although the uh, Chiron did say that uh, after uh, King threw Allen out of the Royal Rampage uh, last month, and they did a callback uh, to that very same spot where King used the choke sleeper on Darby Allen, hung him over the top rope before dropping him to the floor. Darby Allen was able to drag his carcass back in the ring, ate a gonzo bomb, took the loss. Brody King dominated three quarters of this match. Darby Allen got some of his signature spots in, flying through the ropes, made everything look, you know, wild and good, but he was there to take a beating uh, from Brody King, and he absolutely did so. Afterwards, Sting came out to stop the carnage. He was able to almost get the Scorpion death drop onto Brody King when the lights went out. When they came back up, Malachi Black was across from Sting, Brody King locked on the choke sleeper. Sting got misted in his eyes by Malachi Black. Tag team match coming out soon, I would assume, between those two sides. Completely fine with it. Completely fine with all of those guys in the ring with each other. No problem there whatsoever. Then they went to commercial, came back. Tony Schiavone was in the back ready to interview the former Two Dimes, Cole Carter, who was just released from NXT uh, for a a substance policy violation, wellness pile, uh, violation. Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs came through. Starks said the last time we saw Carter, he was sleeping with the fishes and a reference to him being killed off on NXT by Tony D'Angelo. Starks, who's the FTW champion, has now got a open challenge gimmick going and challenged him for later on in the show. That led into the Blackpool Combat Club of John Moxley and ROH Pure Champion Wheeler Yuta defeating the best friends of Trent Beretta and Chuck Taylor. Orange Cassidy and William Regal joined Excalibur and Taz on commentary. During the match, Taz noted that Trent Beretta never liked Wheeler Yuta as the old alliance between best friends and Yuta was invoked a few times. The match went through one commercial break when little, a little under 12 minutes and at the end of the match, Yuta was in peril trying to get to his corner for the tag. Uh, Moxley to Moxley kept getting cut off. Chuck Taylor tagged in. Ran right into a jumping guillotine from Yuta as Trent tried to come into the ring. Moxley yanked him off the apron, put him in the figure four out on the floor. As that was going on, Taylor uh, reversed the guillotine with a suplex into the corner. Chuck went for the awful waffle, but Yuta reversed it into the seatbelt clutch roll-up and got the victory. 
I believe the only words that Orange uttered the entire time was at the very end of the match where he said, Chuck taught him that one before he took off the headphones and walked to the back. Then there was a video package for the ROH world title match coming up. Claudio against Jonathan Gresham. Swerve in our glory time. The AEW Tag Team Championship celebration. Keith Lee, Swerve Strickland, Tony Schiavone hosted this. Kevin Gates was shown in the front row with a flute of champagne in his hand. Swerve says that as a hip-hop mogul that he invited him. Keith asked Kevin when the deluxe edition of his new album was coming out before thanking the fans and challenging the entire division to get at him. Lee said it was time for a toast when Smart Mark, Smart Mark Sterling and Tony Nese came out. Sterling is still petitioning for Swerve to be fired. I know this really gets under Brian's skin. I think the fact that he is such a cartoon character gimmick lawyer, I, I think it works. He says the majority of the locker room has already signed this petition to get Swerve out of there. And uh, Nice starts to make himself you know, at home with the cake and the champagne they had out there, grabs himself a glass, sticks his finger in the cake. Keith Lee looked very upset about that. Sterling said they only need one more name on that petition and said Gates could be that man. Said after mistaking him for a young M.A., though, which kind of made me laugh, made reference to Gates' song Two Phones before he and Nice moved right in front of him, asked him to do the right thing for the AEW roster and sign the petition to kill off Swerve. Gates refused. Sterling poked at his chest. Says he's just like Swerve, he's untrustworthy, and his music sucks. It's not true. New album Kaza out right now. But that got Gates out from behind the guardrail. Sterling backed off, screaming that if he gets touched, he'll sue. So instead, Gates went chest to chest with Tony Nese, sort of. I mean, it was a ridiculous visual in that Kevin Gates is like 6'2 and is at least six inches taller than Tony Nese and like has 75 pounds on him. Most of it on the arms and the shoulders and the upper body. Nice asked him what he was going to do. So Gate just grabbed him by his necklace and punched him right in the face. And it's not like it killed Tony Nice or anything, but he hit him in the face. So I believe it. <laughs> Dropped Tony Nice. That was that. From behind Smart Mark Sterling, Swerve picked up the cake. And when Sterling turned around, cake in the face, and it looked great. The greatest cake face in pro wrestling history. Sorry, Cornette. Sorry, anybody that's done that gimmick before. Before uh, they end up going to commercial, Swerve goes over. He poses. West Side Gun is also in the crowd. They don't mention him, but he's ringside, so the fly god is there. After a break backstage, John Silver and Alex Reynolds did a bunch of, or Alan Reynolds, whatever the hell his name is, a bunch of bad comedy is what was done, really, with those Dark Order guys with the Butcher and the Blade over a T-shirt that said, Butch, it wasn't very good. Silver and Reynolds got beat up. They deserve to for, for having that shirt and doing this comedy. Hangman Adam Page ran in with a chair and ran the heels off. There was one good part where, you know, at the end where they're just like, you know, heavy breathing and rolling around on the ground before they, they fade out. Page goes, you know, are you guys all right? And, and Silver said no. And I thought that was funny. Christian Cage and Luchasaurus then defeated the Varsity Blondes of Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. Luchasaurus basically destroyed both guys before tagging in Christian so he could get the cheap pin on Pillman. After the match, Christian got on Luchasaurus' shoulders and did the Jurassic Express pose. Jungle Mute Boy's music hit and Key came down with a chair. Luchasaurus was blocking the ring as, as Jungle Boy came down. But then the Dinosaur Man turned to the side, stood next to Jungle Boy, stared at Christian. As Jungle Boy goes to get in the ring, Christian goes haul-assing out of it, not only through the crowd, goes up the steps, goes into a concourse. He's out of there, gone. What does this mean? Could it be a swerve? We'll have to find out next week. The Gun Club challenged the acclaim to a blaze battle between Austin and Max Caster, a freestyle battle between the two sides. At that point in the show, Jim Ross joined commentary FTW Championship Ricky Starks, babyface Cole Carter, the former Two Dimes, went six minutes. It felt longer than that. The, by the end of the match, the crowd was booing Carter. 
I mean, there's several reasons for that, in my opinion, not the least of which is Starks is a truth machine out there. He is absolute. If you have a little bit of vanilla in your interview, he's going to outshine you. His presence just standing there outshines people. So when you wrestle a match for six minutes, you have this smiling baby face who was the former two dimes. People are wondering why this isn't on elevation. This isn't on dark. It's it's not even on rampage. It's on dynamite. Does this guy deserve this shot? Did he do anything to stand out? Not really, no. And I think the crowd kind of recognized that. Didn't do anything wrong or anything really badly, but he didn't get any reaction. And Ricky Starks absolutely outshone him, made a challenge after the match for anybody to come out. Dan Housen does. He takes the challenge for next week, another FTR championship match. I like this gimmick going on with Ricky Starks facing different people each week. Then it was time for the FTR promo. You heard the second half. The first half was Cash Wheeler talking about the Briscoes and really concentrating on that. We had a segment with Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, and Satnam Singh backstage. Lethal was complaining that Samoa Joe was not there. Christopher Daniels came up, defended Joe's honor, and then challenged Lethal for Friday Night Rampage, which was accepted. Tag match, Jay Cargill and Kira Hogan with Stokely Hathaway and Jermaine Dupree against defeated Athena and Willow Nightingale. This was the most hip-hop-oriented show it, both it, with Kevin Gates actually being openly out there. Same thing with Dupree sitting next to Stokely at ringside, but gun. There was a, a Wu Tang Clan reference. It, it was really, it was something else. It was supposed to be a six woman with Layla Gray and Chris Statlander, but Gray couldn't perform. Cargill and Hogan got the victory. Uh, Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa. It was announced Rosa is going to be facing Miyu Yamashita next week. And Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter interrupted their interview. And I thought challenged them for Friday night, but apparently not because in the package that aired afterwards, they just said Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter were going to be in action. So I'm not sure against who. And then it was time for the main event. Barbed Wire Everywhere match. Chris Jericho, Eddie Kingston. Carnage everywhere. Real barbs were used. Men were busted open and bleeding. Everything was wrapped in barbed wire. They had a shark wrapped in barbed wire, not a real one. The, the ring bell was in barbed wire. The microphone was in barbed wire. They bled everywhere. I'll go into a little more detail after the break, but the bottom line is Chris Jericho gets the victory, but Eddie Kingston got revenge at the end putting Jericho through a big board full of barbed wire as the show went off the air. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.